We have like a newsletter every week and we choose a service data of the week and it's my job to like pick someone and like I've never had like a harder decision just looking at all these people and like what they do to just pick one person that exemplifies how much data is dedicated to service um, and it's not even just completing service hours it's like living this um, idea of just making the world a better place every single day like one of my sisters Belle is the president of um, Spartans for Special Olympics and it's a cause that's been passion, like her passion since high school, and she just loves to talk about it, loves to have Thetas go and support her. And last fall we went, and there were so many Thetas just being buddies for all of these like special needs athletes. And just to see all of our sisters get together and support a sister who was really passionate about a cause is something that I'm still amazed about every day that I see people do these things. Um, and we have a 12-hour service requirement every semester, but... The way that um, people talk about their service, I don't see them as thinking about it as a requirement. Like People really like to talk about and like to think about um, why they're doing service, which is something that I think is just an incredible thing for them to be able to transcend that idea of just, this is what I need to do to be in good standing, like this is what I need to do to go to formal. People are thinking about, why am I doing this service? Like How can I better help the community with my own like strengths and what can I do to just help people in any way that I can? Um, we also participate in a bunch of philanthropy events around campus. We like to attend other people's philanthropies. Um, I think it's like, really fun, like going to Anchor Splash last year was just like incredible to see all these thetas with like signs in the bleachers just cheering like so annoyingly at everything. <laughs> it's just like, what are we doing? But it was awesome. Um, and we have our own um, philanthropy events, so we're hosting Bumps at Kite every spring. Um, I'm in the middle of planning it right now for this spring. Um, which goes to support the Theta Foundation, which gives um, scholarships and other like financial needs, um, financial help to people in need, like that are Thetas around the nation, which is really incredible to us to be able to help someone in California go to school. It's just like it connects our sisters on a national level, like supporting this cause, and I think it's very important for us to be reminded of that. And like Bump Kite is how we do that. Um, we also have Catwalk, which I already talked about with Casa, but. It's just something that everyone just is excited about every year, like being able to support all of these kids and support all of these people who are helping with so much around our community is just amazing. And um, yeah, I'm just really excited to be the service chair for this semester and just like be able to like do like implement new ideas. Like we are starting a partnership with Abington Arms in April, which is the residency like right around University Circle. Um, for like elderly people and we're gonna play like games with them every month and just have like a game day and like hang out with them and listen to their stories and just things like that remind me like why I joined Theta and why I like fell in love with all of these like people and like what they do. Another thing that we've gotten a chance to do is um, we do a joint service event with our alumni chapter and John Carroll Theta chapter and so um, this past winter we went to, or I guess it's still winter, but um, we went to um, the Cleveland Food Bank and sorted food um, with sisters of all ages and from all walks of life. So. so the last thing we want to touch on is our chapter presentations. So we do presentations um, fairly regularly in chapter. Um, we have at least one every chapter, if not two. This past, um, this past, it would have been two weeks, uh, two chapters ago. We had an all presentation chapter, so we decided that we just had so many things that we wanted to go over with people that we weren't going to do business, and we were just going to. Um, go through presentations. So this is um, one of the most entertaining uh, presentations we had was your rush crush a love story, but um, and so you know we we made it fun. We got to talk about you know why why we don't use the term rush crush and why we try to stay away from rush crushes and how it is, can be detrimental to that P and M and also to our chapter. Um, but other, um, we do have, you know, we don't just talk about recruitment in these presentations. We do a vari wide variety, and um, most of the time it's just um, average chapter members who are really passionate about something that um, want to speak up about it and, and talk about it with the entire chapter. Um, we've had uh, presentations on sustainability. We actually had an alumni of our chapter come in and give us, she works for, um, the sustainability uh, office on campus, and she um, gave a presentation 
um, about recycling and it was great to have her come back and um, it was great to have her share her knowledge with our chapter. We've also um, have had uh, members give presentations about um, about causes that they're really passionate about. Um, we've had sisters who have gone abroad to do service and they come back with um, not only the most beautiful pictures that you've ever seen, but also great stories to tell and um, great experiences to share. And sometimes if, you know, they don't even want to step down from the podium, they just want to keep talking and talking about, about what they did and how what they did made an impact and how, um, how to get involved in the same way that they did. Um, we also do quite a few presentations on cultural holidays. So um, one of the things that we really appreciate in our chapter is our diversity, and we really like to showcase that, um, and we really like to educate people on things that other people are passionate about, um, and including um, religion. And so we do try to um, incorporate when there's um, a holiday coming up of any sort, we like to allow members the chance to share what that holiday means to them and why it's important to them. Um, in addition, we have had presentations on mental health and stress management. Um, we've had smart uh, smart leaders come in and give us pro or, and give us um, instruction on how to uh, properly manage stress, and uh, especially during during stressful times like finals. Um, and it, that has been really helpful. Um, I remember the, the start of the SMART presentation we had, everybody had to lay on the floor. And we, it, it was, um, I think, just, just telling us all to lay on the floor, I think made us a, feel, made us take ourselves a little less seriously and made us uh, relieve our stress automatically. Um, so I thought that that was a really great way that we could have utilized the SMART program. Um, we also have talked about the meaning of culture of care during chapter, so we have discussions about um, about what culture of care means to us as individuals, what culture of care means to our chapter, and what it means to the community. So we've really tried to strive to educate our members with presentations as well as get them thinking about the world around them and how they can have an impact on the world. Um, and that is all we have for you today. If you have any questions, we would be happy to answer them at this time. So you, you talked a lot about how a lot of the women in the chapter have been able to make meaning out of the service they're doing and their involvement. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering, how have you been able to help them grow in that way? How, what reflection is there? Like, what does it look like? Yeah, so one of the things we did last semester that I thought really helped people start thinking about these kinds of things was we had a discussion in chapter about what breaks your heart. So um, we we had a bunch of different people, you know, the service, the past service and philanthropy director came up and wrote on the board, you know, um, you know, what breaks your heart, what what kinds of things, um, you know, make you would make you cry. And then when you think about those things, a lot of those things are attached to causes. So how can you take things that you really care about and how can you turn them into meaningful service activities? So we've had brainstorming sessions like that and I think that a lot of our members really took that to heart and um, really applied that in their service. And, um I like to, I've run a few group service projects already this semester and something that we like to do after just kind of talk about the impact that we've made on something and like what types of things that we've just done and like how we've grown as people because of these and just a few weeks ago I went with a bunch of new members to the nature center and we just made them like signs for flowers and stuff but we got to talk to this amazing woman who works at the nature center and she was just telling us all about her life and her passion and how she just loves flowers and like loves all of these things and we just learned so much about her passion that like the entire way home we just talked about her it wasn't even the service it was just the experience that we had making these signs with this amazing woman so I think that just being able to talk with your sisters about like what you're passionate about is just really important. So you had a 
a, co a conversation with the chapter about culture of care. Yes. What kind of things came up? Like, what was the consensus? What what kind of themes did you see? <laughs> yeah, I think that you know, I think the first thing everybody thinks about when they think of culture of care is like, all right, we got to make sure that if Susie goes out to a party, that she gets home safe. And I think that that our members were really quick to pick up that that isn't the only thing that culture of care encompasses. Um, and I think that we uh, talked a lot about not feeding people's habits. So, um, you know, if, if somebody consistently stays at the library until 3 a.m., you know, telling them, you know, like, hey, you know, Susie, maybe, maybe you should come home and get a good eight hours of sleep because that might be more beneficial for you in the long run instead of, like, you know, saying, like, oh, yeah, you know, KSL for life or, you know, something, that, instead of encouraging those kinds of habits or, um, you know, when our sisters leave the house with wet hair, telling them to put a hat on and um, think, things, you know, I think we... We tried to stay away, tried, tried to move away from the, um, the medical amnesty portion of culture of care, which I think has been emphasized enough, and really have tried to look at it more of, in a broader sense. So. Can you talk a little bit about what you expect of your sisters uh, from a chapter standpoint and how you go about making sure that those expectations are met. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we do have requirements um, as far as you know our bylaws go. Um, like Megan had said, we have a 12-hour service requirement um, along with the, we have a one philanthropy event per semester that, um, that you can choose which one you want to go to, but you have to ch attend at least one. Um, we have study hour requirements, so depending on your GPA from the previous semester, it correlates with the number of study hours you have to put in, and those are and the study hours are all um, run by sisters. So, uh, you know, there's study hours hosted every day by somebody different in a different location, so they're not that hard to uh, to attend, and so then you have a chance of studying with your sisters. Um, other requirements that we have, I think that's the, the yeah. basic ones. Um, and then chapter, of course, every week you have to attend chapter. So, um, and so that those are um, the big things. The, the, but those are, of course, you know, the minimum standard. So that's kind of the groundwork that we lay down for everyone and say, um, you know, if you want to be a member of good standing, this is what you have to do. We find that a lot of times people go above and beyond those things. So. Um, so how do you go about, you know, if you have, if this is sort of the minimum, um, you know, in every organization there's sort of unwritten expectations, mm -hmm. where like, you know, if you want to be a member in good standing, this is where you're at. If you want to be, you know, a, a great thing, a leading woman, then you need to be here. And how do you sort of go about making sure that, you know, that those things are pointing to the values of your organization and not just checking a box? Yeah, and I think that that's something that we've had a great conversation about, you know, what what does it, you know, what does service mean? And I think that it kind of goes back to what Megan was saying about making sure that you're finding mean, meaningful service um, and making sure that, you know, you're not just going to study hours and checking Facebook or things along those lines. I think, um, I think we, as an organization, really, as far as, like, our values go, I think we really, um, point at them as often as we can. So in chapter, we're having a discussion about um, culture of care. You know, we can always point it back to, you know, well, we want to be leading women and we want to, you know, make sure that we're standing up for what we think would be the best for this community. And so I think we do a good job of, of pointing back to, to things in, in conversation and making sure that we're making those connections. Um. What do you, so you guys have a lot of conversations and discussions. Yes. <laughs> um, so I kind of have two things with that. Yeah. Um, one would be like, what do you think was the most widely affecting conversation that you guys have had that you think really hit the chapter widespread? And then I'll have another one. But I think, I don't know what you think. I, I think that um, the inclusivity conversation that we had during recruitment, it like like I said, the conversation didn't stop. Like, it didn't want to end. And so um, I think that, you know, we had 
girls talk about times that they felt that they were not included. We had times that girls, you know, talked about, you know, I felt so included when somebody did this. And I think it was a chance for us to, you know, think about ourselves and like how we feel included and also think about how we can do that. Um, you know, even, even when, you know, it, it kind of goes back to like the, the middle school, you can't sit with us type thing. Um, you know, I think there's a lot that you can do just to make people in your everyday life feel like they, they belong at your table. And so um, it, it was a really great conversation. I think that it's, it created a lot of thought and, and um, it was very impactful and I think it was really beneficial to our recruitment. Um, and even coming from like, just like being new at recruitment and not knowing exactly what's going on all the time, my class went back and we talked about it again. And so I think that's really important that it was like, it wasn't just like a one-time thing, it was like a continuing conversation. We still talk about it to this day, about how important it is like to be like in our own chapter to make everyone feel included and then like this whole community. So it was really cool to like have my class still want to talk about it. Like it showed me that it really mattered what we were talking about. Okay, and then you also hit on, like you've kind of hit on this, but just like sum it up. Um, how you see meaningful actions or initiatives come out of these conversations or discussions? Yeah. Like, not every conversation <laughs> needs, like, action verbs coming out of it. But right. And I think that that's something that we definitely could improve upon, and I think that it's something that we're striving to improve upon, but I do think that, um, like Megan was saying, you know, we kind of see, if we want to use this example, in, in spe this example specifically, um, I think that, you know, we see it now with our new members and we talk a lot about, you know, don't go little hunting, you know, we take the time to get to know everyone and not just to make sure that you're going to stick a label on them as my little, you know, <laughs> you want to get to know people because they're people and, you know, and they're in your chapter and you, you want to, to, you know, share some sort of uh, bond with them at some point and so I think that it's definitely been something that has carried on and um, it's been, you know, we saw it in recruitment, and we've also seen it in, in other aspects of our chapter. Um, just last week, we actually had this thing that a sister put on called big training, and the whole time I was like going and expecting to like be taught how to be a big, like how to be a role model, and instead we talked about like inclusivity the entire time and like how that we shouldn't be focused on one person, and like we talked about times that we didn't feel like we were being like sought after or like things like that, and like what we can do to like make every like new member feel like they're wanted by everybody and that they're interested to like know about everyone. So that was really cool. That whole thing. Cool. So I I don't know the phrasing is on our board or judicial board. I was wondering if you could just talk to me about that process and how that's made up and yeah. how that fits in. Do you want to talk about it or you can, I mean, okay. <laughs> a little bit. Better. Okay. So um, uh, we have MDC, which stands for our Membership <coughs> Development Committee, um, and it's probably the least J boardy J board that um, that you that any chapter that I know of has, um, because it is our Membership Development Committee. So our main goal is to develop our members, um, and it has the president and the VP one or the COO sits on.